I wasn't quite sure where, <laughs> what, or how it was going to progress, and I'm still not sure, <laughs> so it must be the Lord that's doing it, because I sure haven't a clue where it's going to go or what it's going to do. But I know that we were in Psalms 5, and we're going to read from Psalm 5, 8 through the rest of the Psalm through 12. And part of what I think we get from Psalms is the idea that David felt, experienced, and was real about what he was going through. And so he expresses sometimes the reality of his relationship with God that he was able to just let it all hang out. And in a way, that's what we forget is that God already can see us. He already knows what you've done, what you thought, what you did or didn't do. So in that respect, David is a prime example of a person who was more than willing to take his case, as it were, or his life, and give it back to God in obvious praise, in song, in stating the feelings that he had about the things that he was going through. And he wasn't shy about doing it. So, in Psalms, as we read them, remember, it's okay to feel what you feel. Express it to the God, express it to God. Express it to God and leave it there so that God himself can take from it and apply to us the reality of what we need for our day. In other words, get real <laughs> with God. Be you. In Psalms 5, verse 8, Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness, because of mine enemies' sake. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wicked. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with the tongue. Destroy them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsel. Cast them out into the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those that put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Because you defend them, let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. Wilt thou compass him also as with a shield? Asking God to lead us is always a good thing. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. God, make the right choices for me. Because righteousness means a right choice, making the correct choice, making the obvious, we would say, choice for our benefit. So, I don't want to make that choice, God. You lead me in that way and make my choices for me. Because I know what happens when I do my own thing. But also, God, not only make my choices, but open up the way that you know and make it straight so I don't fall to the left or the right but that you can make my way straight so I could follow it easily and know the direction that I'm going and follow in it without there being any frustration or aggravation of trying to figure out which way I should go oh no do I go to the left oh no do I go to the right no you go straight to God and let him lead you. In those who are not faithful, in those who are not willing to do what God has told them to do, then in their mouth, in their very words, you will see that they lack that trust in him. Their own words convict them of their faithlessness because there is no faithfulness in what they are doing and they don't commit their way unto the Lord. Because of that, in their own words condemning themselves, they likewise reveal the wickedness that they have inside which causes their mouth to speak those things that they ought not to say, which is always the type of person that does not choose to walk with the Lord and talk with the Lord and be led by the Lord 
but chooses to go in a different direction based upon the own, their own decision-making inside. That as they think, so a man is, and so they don't have the mind of Christ, so they think that they have the right choices made. When God says it's wickedness because it is in rebellion to God because of their unfaithfulness. When you think, read, and consider the unfaithfulness of men of God or those who are doing those things that God has not told them to do, then their mouth, their throat is like an open sepulcher. It is like dryness. You don't experience any vibrancy or life, but you experience the grave because it's like death. If you've ever gone into a sepulcher in Jerusalem, you can see cockroaches line the wall because they're hiding in the shade of it. Or if it's a sealed sepulcher, then you realize that it's cold and, and it's dry and it's not anything remotely considered as being life-giving. And yet, those that are unfaithful, those that have their own way of thinking, their own mindset, their own faith that they say that they portray, but they're unfaithful to God and letting Him lead the way, they flatter with the tongue. They infuse you with saying how good you are and how much they build themselves up even and other things other than faithfulness to God himself. Destroy them, O God. What else can we say? If they are not faithful to God, then they are not going to be productive in choosing God. So David cries out, destroy them. But how does he say to? Let them fall by their own counsels. So let them get tripped up in their own dece deceptions. Let them make their own mistakes. Let them go their own way. Give them enough rope, O oh God, and they'll hang themselves. So that's how David wants them to be destroyed. Not because God will destroy them, but God will allow them to go the way that they've chosen, as we're told in Romans. And he says, cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. Let them go along with what they think they believe in. Let them do those failures that they're doing. If they choose to be unfaithful and they won't respond to God himself, then how would they respond to us? So the reality is we let them go to their own deceptions, their own ideas, their own realities that they say that they believe in which in reality becomes a deception and they trip up and they fall and they wind up destroyed, as David well knew, because he had seen it many times. And the reason being is because of one thing, that they are unfaithful. The one reason why we can let them go on their way, the one reason why we don't have that ability to save them or pluck them out of the fire is because they have rebelled against God. They have rebelled against you. David says, so he says, fine, if they've rebelled against you, God, let them go. Let them get tripped up in their own way. Let them be destroyed by their own maneuverings and machinations and all the things that they seek to tangle themselves up with and then wind up being bound so they can no longer move or function. But as opposed to those that were unfaithful, let all those who put their trust in God rejoice. Let them shout for joy because, God, you defend them. Because God keeps us from that deception and flattery, that unfaithfulness, that rebellion against God, but that choice to obey God rather than to find ourselves in our own self-determination, but rather the realization we need to yield ourselves to the leading of God to let Him direct us the way that we should go. Let all those who put their trust in you rejoice, and let them ever shout for joy, because you defend them. Let also they that love thy name be joyful in you. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, we are told, shall be saved. So if they love the Lord their God, if they love Jesus with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, then they shall be joyful. They shall be saved. God will work on them to bring them to that point of dedication for salvation. But you, God, David asks, bless the righteous. Please, God, give 
your blessing upon those that make the right choice, those that are faithful to you, those that have committed themselves wholly to you, to be led by you, to be instructed by you, to be guided by you. And God, while you bless them, as you extend your hands upon them, cover them as you would as a protection from all that may transpire in their life so that nothing except that which you look down upon from heaven and cause to be in their life harm them, hurt them, or cause them anything else except to trust in you with all their heart. So be their shield. Use your own hands and protect them. And so in Psalm 5, we find David always seeking to be led of the Lord. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. Because, why? They put their trust in you. We are always called to trust in the Lord and be led by him. Or else we find ourselves, as David says from verse 8 through 12, like the unfaithful. And when you're unfaithful, you get caught up in your own web. You trip up in your own words. You fall in your own deceptions. And you become lost. Except that you cry out to God. For those that love His name, should they call upon Him in love, He would hear and restore.